The second instance of design dilemma. Design dilemma. And today, of course, we're joined by Hedrick Nichols. Do you want to introduce yourself, Hedrick? Hi, I'm Hedrick Nichols. I am also board president of like... <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm very excited about that. I just thought I'd give myself a shout out for that. Hello, guys. Glad to be here. I also do work in the DEI sector. I uh, have written several books, uh, one for teachers that won an IPI award, Finding Your Blind Spots, and five for middle school readers, all a part of the Racial Justice in America series, um, STEM heroes, things like the Black Wall Street and beyond those kinds of topics. I'm a mom, a military mom, and and a fur godmom and a human godmom too. So that's a pre- that's good stuff about me. We're happy to have you here. I hope that your love of the work that we do holds up after we subject you uh, to this. <laughs> Essentially, you're going to have one hour to prepare either a 45 minute lesson or a project over a randomly generated standard and a randomly generated creative confine. I'm going to go ahead and spin this wheel. I plugged in 10th grade standards from all subject areas. So we got our spinner wheel. Is to construct a scientific explanation based on evidence for how environmental and genetic factors influence the growth of organisms. Oh my Um, God. I mean, this is evolution, right? Like we're looking at evolution, like genetics. You could do... uh, like I'm the one that's supposed to explain this. You could do the 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 cross Chris. thing, the thing where it's like the minor and major traits. Oh, the pun the pun it square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's part right. of that. Yeah, cool. That's gonna be great. All right. Okay. Well, good luck. That's your standard. Let's go. So here's the creative confine. Look at something with technology. I'm so, I'm so it just works out really well. A segment of the lesson plan must involve a David Attenborough narrated documentary. This is wonderful news. So, okay, Chris, does this, could it go either way here in the sense that as the teacher, you have to be the David Attenborough-esque narrator or students must? The confine has already been given. You can't decide, you can't confine the confine. All right. No, 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 that, yeah. (laughs) For this one, we pre-selected the fact that Nick is going to be going head to head against Hedrick, and I'm going to be the judge. I'm not feeling good about this. I'm, I'm looking at the standard and I'm panicking. But I don't teach science, and I don't teach tenth grade, so I'm a middle school tech apps teacher. So I'm going to use tech to the best of my ability. The first thing I did was I called my old friend Chat GPT because yeah, duh, genetic factors, inherited traits, gene expression, mutations, environmental factors, nutrition, temp. This is going to be so. So, you know, we spent uh, an entire video kind of ragging on uh, the, the AI vision for Khan and Khan Academy. And here I am clicking on organism growth and the environment. Uh, middle school biology standard here. That's kind of perfectly aligned. So, yeah, props to uh, Khan Academy. Watch this video to refresh your memory. I cannot type. Student will be able to. Construct a scientific explanation based on evidence for how environmental and genetic factors influence the growth of organisms. David Attenborough <laughs> <laughs> hates toads. Okay, maybe this blob like repellent <laughs> belch of nature. <laughs> what makes for a good scientific explanation is a conceptual question. Um, Where do I find evidence for the environmental factors on organism growth? Those are, um, and those are factual questions. So we've got those. What will I do next? This can happen. Ow. (laughs) This can happen even with this glove on. One of them has just gone through. I can feel it. It's quite painful. Look closely at the spine and you... She might not be there. She's my science person. I really need her to be there. She might be doing her own live. You just never know. Bonnie Nieves, biology goddess. All right, so there's no Bonnie. I am on my own. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to think. I'm just, I, wait, we need thinking music. I can't think without thinking music. So I'm going to put on some thinking music on Spotify. Hmm. As a teacher, 
your students need to understand the foundations of the factors that influence very like grandfatherly um in terms of just his matter of factness cadence um experiential the year is 2015 the world appears to have a green tint to it but there are also some dead insects in the foreground but don't worry about that for now hey all right bonnie nieves is about to save today okay hey bonnie you're on all right, so in science, we always look for reasoning. Right. It's not enough just to have the evidence. You need to have the reasons why you chose it, and even more meaningful would be reasons why other things weren't chosen. So that could be something. This is the elusive Waldo. While his genetic makeup is limited. Cool. Okay, I just wanted to check it with my with my science person. Yeah, I love that. Color and his size may be determined by his genes passed down from his ancestors. So what I just did is I found my dog Wally and I sat down with him and I explained how both environmental and genetic factors uh, can influence both his coat and his kind of the range of factors related to his height and weight. Hedrick, if you could walk me through this on the uh, the screen recording here and just kind of show, show us what you did. Okay, I need actually like 30 seconds to get something. May I? All right, I will be right back. Is this part of the bit? That's what I can't tell. Does Hedrick have like physical examples? Because if she has like some kind of actual tool for this, I think you're beat. Are we here? Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Oh my Hello, students. Hello. I'm so glad that you're all here. Um, as you know, we've been working toward better advocacy and really making an impact on our world so I'll tell you what nick is say it again what, what say thing. it again uh, inquiring minds want to know first of all i want you to do your research what makes for a good scientific explanation where are you going to find your evidence for the environmental factors on organism growth and where do you find the evidence for the genetic factors on organism growth Fast forward, fast forward. I fast forward in my regular accent. All right. While we're on that, you're going to choose your audience. What group or organization are you completing this research? Because I like to talk in a British accent. Leave me alone. Now, what <laughs> group or organization are you completing this research for? Find a real organization. Get into your groups. And I'm going to give you 30 minutes to check out different kinds of organizations that suit your role. Fast forward. We've got your role. Now, you've completed your research, you know who you are. What is your product? You can make me a video. You can develop a pitch in Canva. I'm sure if you say, you know, product pitch, you'll be able to find a template. You can put together one of those. I do need to have something live. So there must be a video element where you, with your charisma and charm, tell your audience why it's important to know about these growth factors and how they're going to positively or negatively impact the audience that you are in support of. Now, remember, there's, an, there's a difference between evidence and reasoning. You know my guru, Miss, Miss Biology Goddess. Yes, of course I consulted her. I always consult her. All right, go ahead and get started, and we'll come back together at the end, and you can all tell me how you're going to show your learning and in what form you'll be presenting your scientific explanation and how it will impact. The organization that you've chosen to support. All righty, Nick. <laughs> oh my God, I, I, I'm, I am sweating because this is like one of those things where you have to follow up an act that was so good where you're just like, no, just give it, just hand it over. The, uh, I do not need the to, commitment to the bit is, yeah, I, I do not I'm need not to embarrass myself here. This was great. Uh, 
No, oh come on, God. you got Literally. this. Come on, I know you got this. <laughs> oh my God. I will, I will tell you. So, well, Chris, do you have uh, feedback or anything on, uh, on Hedrick's performance? Is really what that was. The design is cool. This is actually, I'm, I'm curious to see, Nick, if yours is similar, because this is what I, th- I think that we were kind of talking about in terms of making it student-centered. You're researching, you know, things on your own. You're figuring out the things that you want to do. You get to choose a role. They're in groups. All that's super exciting. Uh, like policy organizations and like getting into debates over those things. Um, I like the idea of, you know, just doing a simple business pitch. It has, you know, kind of like what we're looking for on here. It's a solid lesson. It's also a really good lesson too. If like, this is what I also would make. Cause like, I'm not actually really sure about what the standards asking for. Um, and it's a way to just hand that over to the kids and we'll figure it out together. <laughs> Yeah, but also, why are you going to create a scientific explanation for something that there's already? I mean, you can open a book and find out the scientific explanation for that. Yeah, I love then how the emphasis gets to then like, how are you going to communicate that learning? Because that's that's like the big transferable skill through all of that. Right. Which is well, it's great. You can look up the facts and do whatever, you know, online or in your book. But then how do you communicate that to an, an audience? And that's really, I think, what the rest of that lesson really emphasizes. So that's, that's great. We teach yeah. our kids so many facts, yeah. but we don't connect it to why is this useful? You know, we talk about real world learning and then we give them a word problem based on apples and oranges and they don't shop yet. You know, give mm. them a word problem based on how many, cho- how many times do I have to wash my uncle's car in order to earn the money for some, I don't know, Air Jordans. You know what right. I mean? And so this gives them what are you passionate about? And I've, and I've had this kind of situation because we always do SDG based stuff. And my kids always ask, you know, so I said, well, what do we want to, what do you mean? What organization? I don't know. What are you passionate about? And then it crystallizes, you know, and they'll say, well, I had a group who said we didn't have any LG support at the middle school level, only at the high school level. Or, you know, all of our teachers are still using paper and we have devices. Why are they using paper or why are they using straw, plastic straws in the in their um, in the juice boxes in the milk yeah. straws? You know, straws, it, they impact the environment negatively. And so they actually developed pitches to go and say, hey, are there companies that don't use plastic straws? Just little things like that. Sure. And I love, too, that you wrap it up with kind of opening up that dialogue to talking about why you're choosing that evidence. Uh, Because then you can get into like bias, you can get into where is this information being sourced from, media literacy, um, because not only are we talking about scientific explanations and like hard facts, but also the fact that these the facts themselves are debated. Bravo. Yeah, and ra- round of applause. Oh, round of applause. Hey. Nick, you got it. You should have went first. There, there, it's like, you know, like when you're in class and you want to go first to make sure that like you just get it out of the way. And if you're followed up, you don't have to follow something too good. That's what this is right now. Um, That's what that is. Yeah. Well, just click on my click on my Google slides. All right. All right. I, I, people are probably going to uh, uh, recognize a very common theme for, for mine, which is just I want to make it student accessible, student friendly. So in my imagination, kind of word that David Attenborough looks like this goat. So it's a pun. It's both that David Attenborough is the goat and also it, it's something that would be the focus of his nature documentaries. Right. So mm. I would ask the class, like, who, who is this? What, yeah. What's the, <laughs> what's the relationship here? And maybe kids know who he is from his face. Maybe they don't proceed. I had no idea. Dude is 97 years old. Could you believe that? He's almost a hundred. I had no clue. But anyway, just blah, blah, blah. And then I picked two clips that I thought were great, both for their kind of their length and also just kind of shows how literally hands on that he is in this. And you get his awesome cadence and just kind of ask those questions about what makes him compelling. And then the second video there is him. They handed him this script to narrate Adele's Hello, the music video. So it's just a play by play of him narrating scene by scene of what's happening here. Uh, So it's a little bit more of a comedic thing. But again, two clips that are under two minutes, probably kids would connect right away to like hearing that voice in some kind of media. And really then, since I don't know, I kind of felt the same thing that Hedrick did, like about the factual part. I was more interested in like, what makes him such a compelling figure? And so I pulled that Mm. word in here just be like, what does it mean? What is it about 
him that evokes interest and attention or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. And kind of then setting that aside to then get to the facts. And so, again, same same thing you did is like, hey, let's just get the facts um, quick and easy here. This is just like four minutes from Khan Academy. That is, ex I plugged in the standard into Google, and this was the first result. So that was like, the first one I got too. That's funny. That's <laughs> it. It's the standard language. And so then I was like, hey, we're gonna be David Attenborough then. So I wanted to kind of knight kids to go out into their environment and find an organism in their environment. So it could be like outside, an insect, a plant, an animal, a pet. You know, it could be their little brother, you know, I don't, you know, just something out there that they could find that's local that they have a connection to. And I like that because then they can share it with us in the class. You know, w whenever you're listening to the video, you can hear me just explain like, hey, here's Wally. He's a great Pyrenees. Here's how his genes shaped the expression of his traits, but then environment through socialization and some of these other things. And he was very um, shy. <laughs> in this video, which is not characteristic for him. So it was kind of funny. Here's kind of a one point rubric for it. Let's use that against my crappy video and just kind of see, hey, what makes it good or bad? Not gonna lie, I'm kind of between like a rock and a hard place between deciding a winner. It is a friendly competition. I do have to decide a winner and I, I, I'll, I'll do- I will, say, I will say this. I think that in a perfect world, that lesson would be the precursor to the capstone project. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I you think they fit I mean? together. They would get all yeah. of that research. They would, they would do the research. They would do the, the, what makes a compelling, you know, a compelling presentation. They would do all of those things. They would get practice at it before actually just looking at other people's pitches and creating their own. They would actually get an at bat. Building off of that, I think the pros of, of both of these fit in together like really well. Like the hook that you have, Nick, is really solid. Like watching David Attenborough do the hello read would hook a bunch of 10th graders for sure. It's Hedrick, if you did the David Attenborough voice at the beginning of the entire lesson also would probably be fairly captivating to kids, um, if not a little terrifying, depending on the clientele. <laughs> um, I think that the meat of both the lessons makes sense. I mean, it's hard to decide between the two. Both, both of the content are ostensibly the same, just at different capacities. Nick's is more like, I guess, multimedia focused on a smaller scale, whereas Hendrix is more like intense and has a lot more like research gathering and data. And as a result, they naturally build into each other. So really, it comes down to me to to the uh, creative confine use, not necessarily the content itself, because I think the content's tied. There is one major differentiator that I've already noticed, and it comes down to this video um, from Nick. And if you notice, I, I started playing it here and it really made me lose a lot of points um, for, for Nick's case. If you notice here, as we play the audio. Is the elusive Waldo. While his genetic makeup is limited. I'm not sure what accent Nick is doing in this video. I don't, that's not a David Attenborough. I don't know. <laughs> started off strong, okay? This and then the I lost it. Waldo. Cruel. That's just cruel. I, I, I started off strong and I lost all it. Of his it, was, ancestors. it was hard to maintain. Oh, it sounds I'm like you're doing like, like a jolly rod. The elusive Waldo. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, putting myself out there. I'm trying, man. I'm really trying. He had to actually keep a dog quiet, too. I mean, there got to be some bonus points for that, too. I'm just saying. Hedrick, don't make yourself lose the winning position. Because right okay. now, I'm going to award the winning design to Hedrick solely because of her amazing performance in character for the entire explanation. Uh, even, even when Nick was sweating, I just kept going through it. Uh, so round of applause to Hedrick. Thank you so much, Hedrick, for presenting this amazing lesson. We'll put these both in the show notes as always. I must at least accept my win in an accent. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Lovely. I want to thank all of my competitors as well for just doing a fabulous and an absolutely outstanding job. Okay. Now do that uh, yeah. for seven periods straight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> By the end of the day, yeah, seventh period, Hedrick would not be the same as first period. <laughs>